and I drew my weapon out that I had, my off-duty weapon. One shot is all it took. Snake dropped straight to the ground, the rattle stopped rattling, and Brandon says, I know exactly what it is, let's go. I can remember very distinctly my hands and my face instantaneously started tingling. And I knew that that was a telltale sign that, that I was envenomated. He was already starting to turn pale. I knew that I was going to progressively get worse, and I knew I needed to get anti-venom. I thought that I would actually be able to walk slowly and calmly all the way to the truck. It came to a shock to me when I collapsed. I told Brian, I said, you know, you, you need to get up. We need to keep going. And I knew something's not right. I should be able to get up, but I couldn't. I told him, I said, well, let's carry you out. Let's, let's, you know, I'll carry you. Brandon's a big guy. You're just not going to pick him up and carry him. I think I was kind of starting to lose it a little more than Brandon was. I had no experience whatsoever dealing with snakes or snake bites. We were in some serious trouble. I dialed an internal number that we have. Hey, this is 2224. I'm off duty, and I've got somebody here that's been bit by a rattlesnake. I do know him, Brandon Parker. He's a deputy. There was two distinct fang marks, and it was actually squirting blood with each heartbeat. So that led me to believe that it was in some type of artery or a vein that I might have been hit in. I could literally feel the venom everywhere it went. I could feel it as it was coming up my leg. I could feel it as it was coming into my hips. I could feel it as it was going into my stomach. And that's when we put the constrictive belt on, not a tourniquet, but just a belt to try to constrict it a little bit. I couldn't really sit up. All I wanted to do was lay back. So I just put my legs behind him and propped him up the whole time. No matter what you do, no matter how hard you try, you feel helpless, totally helpless. I started to lose consciousness for the first time, and then I kind of came back to. And that's the first time I thought that this might be it. So my idea of survival was, as long as I'm awake, I'm not dead. And I said, Robert. Do not let me fall asleep. Kept telling me, so don't let me go to sleep. You know, don't let me go to sleep. If I go to sleep, I'm gonna die. Kept telling him just to wake up. Kept slapping him in his head. I know I hit him several times. It was it was like an eternity. I told Brandon, I said, hey, let me go out and at least help. You know, maybe I can get him here quicker. I said, you're not leaving me here by myself. And Brandon wouldn't let me go. Brandon said, I don't want to, said, I don't want to die by myself. <clears throat> so I didn't, I stayed there. I was fading out. I said a prayer that I said, if this is my time, I'll come to you with open arms, but I'm begging you, don't let it be my time. I, I need more time with my daughter. I wasn't thinking about my life ending. I was thinking about not being there for her. We talked about our family, and I told him, you know, you make sure you know I love them, and you, you make sure that, that you tell them that. Brandon wanted to relay to me stuff um, to his wife and daughter. I said, you know, you, you're going to have that opportunity to tell them, tell them yourself, you know, we're going to get out of this. And uh, it just seemed to get worse and worse from there. I 
I was beginning to, to, to really lose it. He was going. He was, he was on his way out. She kept assuring me that help was on the way, but just help wasn't coming quick enough. This guy's got a family and girl. I can't. This can't happen to me. I just can't, have Michelle. I know, Michelle. This can't happen to me. I thought uh, a friend of mine just died right here in front of me. This is not gonna happen like this to me today. I have a daughter to raise, I have a wife to come home to, Courtney, and, and I wasn't gonna let that be the end of it. My daughter's nickname came into my mind and, and I was doing whatever I could to fight. I was yelling, pancakes. I didn't know whether the venom made it to his brain. Um, and I had no idea about pancake and what that meant at the time. I, Maybe he was hungry. <laughs> All I'm listening for is a siren. I want to hear a siren. Robert was reassuring me, hey, man, they're here. They're coming, man. Hang on, hang on. They're here. They're coming. Hang on. I could hear somebody yelling, and I started yelling back, emerging through these kind of thick brush with the EMS crew. Loaded Brandon up in the back of the pickup truck and, and off we went. Getting to the top and actually seeing a helicopter sitting in my front yard. Probably the biggest relief there ever was. The pilot pulled a vial out and gave Brandon a shot of anti-venom. Brandon was bad. I think his blood pressure at that point was 50 over 13. Brandon probably should have already been.